Uh, you must have given me the wrong number, but the phone didn't ring yet. Is it? Was it? Hello? Hello. Fucked <laughs> <laughs> up. It's, uh, you gave me 6921105. Okay, it's 0115. Oh. So I got my number changed. 6920115. Right. So why don't you give me a call right now? All right. 1309-692-0115. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye. around here too, I'll tell you. Yeah. I was just ready to accept the fact that I was totally fried and couldn't, <laughs> couldn't handle anything. Yeah, no, it seems like you need a new answering machine. Oh. It's fucked up. Well. Yeah, I got your letter yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. It's a cool picture. Uh, where'd you get that Miss Biceps picture at? Oh, there was one of those pictures they took from England. It's one of the, from the a motorhead gig. Oh, really? Yeah. That's from the Hammersmith? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So how was that show? Oh, it was great. It yeah. was great. I rarely have I seen a crowd that was just so sincere and so uh, nuts. Yeah. I mean, they were so wound up. It was great. What kind of people were at that show? Like, was there a mixture of hardcores, metalheads, what? You know? Yeah. It was a it was a great mixture. I mean, everybody was totally nuts. The first band that's what broke me out or something like that. Yeah. They booed. They you know were walking around they were really it was they were very rude <laughs> to the first band it's like that for you guys huh yeah but then as soon as um, I came out they just went nuts and you know stayed up for the whole thing it was great cool. it was great okay. it was a great it was a great mix I mean like um, Lemmy is like the you know dad of this thrash metal you know highly respected <laughs> Yeah, we played all new stuff, all new stuff, and uh, our new stuff is really fast, oh, yeah, really much, over the top, unbelievable. Huh? Well, it's now we've been together, and we've toured over 50 cities, and um, like the Wow album was kind of almost like a, you know, we were just getting to know each other, and uh, like studio work almost because we'd never toured together touring together you get cranked up. So who's all in your who's all in your band in Carolina? Same same people. The, the, um on a wall of us, uh, Michael Ray and uh, uh Greg and uh, P C. There are three pieces. Now Wes isn't with me anymore. Wes decided that after the last tour he just uh, said he had <laughs> he had, you know, fallen in love kind of and he kind of wanted to get into um, production. And so on this album, he helped get like the guitar sounds, and he will be credited on the album as helping with the production. That's cool. And that's what he wants to get into. And, you know, cool. He's had his share of music. Yeah, he stuff. just, you know, it's just, um, um, he just had it. And, uh, but he's, he, he loves, he listens to everything. Wes has got a great ear, and he's a, he's a great musician, and he's got a great ear, and he really wants to help other people put it together. Yeah, I, whatever happened with plasmatics anyway, do you want to talk about it? Well, it's, you know, um, I own the name, you know, um, I just chose not to use it anymore. Huh. There was over, what, 12 different musicians in the band since it started. I hired, I fired, what can I say? So what happened with, uh, Stotts? What happened with him? Um. Are you guys still speaking, or is it pretty much... <laughs> um. I, th I thought we, le I don't know, you know, like, I, I don't know, I don't know, he's trying to make it, um, he's trying the best he can. But you, what, you have no interest in having him play in your band anymore, or, or is it just No, mutual? I don't have any interest in him playing in my band. So, do you guys so, end it with friendly terms, or non-friendly, or what? Um, I just chose, uh, for him not to play in my band. Wow. Hey, what do you think about, uh, King Flux, the band that he had together? Because um, I got a tape of them, they're doing like all plasmatics covers. Yeah, I don't know, I never terrible. heard them. I'm not really interested. <laughs> yeah, they have a terrible tape. I have like a live tape of them, and they do like 
four or five plasmatic songs, and they're just horrible. Oh, yeah. I think Richie's really good, you know, myself, but I don't think the singer, you know, which used to be in the band, your band too, right? Black guy? Uh, I don't even, I don't know, and I'm not, um, I'm not interested, I don't know what the, you know, band, as far as I was concerned, didn't exist, because it was, you know, never did too much of anything. Yeah. I don't know who's in it, or who isn't in it, if it's together, if it's not together. I was just pretty much wondering what you thought about them doing your, you know, plasmatic songs. Oh, well, no, no, I don't know what any, you know, hey. Whatever, huh? Sure, if somebody wants to play, play, made a music, go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Go right ahead. So do you go, do you go by Wendy O now, or is it Wendy O Williams, though? That's, that's my name, it's the name I was born with. Cool. Is that so? Well, I've, I've seen, like, some interviews, and they say Wendy O, and then I've seen others, Wendy O Williams. I was just wondering. It's all the same. It's all the same. It's my born name. It's the name I use. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. What'd you do before you got into music, like Plasmatics? Was that your first band, Plasmatics? Yeah, 1977, 1978. So what kind of stuff were we you We just two? finished a new album. It's called Commander Chaos. Uh, that we did that we did over in England. I'll be going back over to England real soon. And uh, uh, doing some more stuff over there. And uh, then I'll be coming, uh, be touring with Motorhead over there. And uh, doing some... TVs over there that's going to be um, live and we'll, we'll come back over here. Uh, it's kind of like the King Biscuit Hour when they do it live on the radio. Oh, really? and in Europe they do it, you play live and it goes all over um, Europe live via satellite cool. and they're going to bring it over here too which is, I love live stuff like that. It's yeah, so exciting. Sure. I saw you on the other day on some commercial for Nightflight with uh, Vince Neal and uh, Tommy Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I cool. just I just did a couple of those for um, Radio 1990. I was on last week and I was on this week on the metal um, Wednesday night metal. <laughs> and uh, last week I showed my video and Motorhead's video. And, uh, oh, really? Yeah, they, they let me do whatever I wanted to do. I missed that one. Shit. And they'll show them again. And I'm working on a thing. They want to have me back. I'll be back with and. Um, Oh, I'll be back within a month, a month. That's cool. I saw that. Um, it's, it's fun because they're kind of giving me the freedom. I hear the one with Motley Crue that was on 7 o'clock tonight. They, they edited it down, but um, they will have a uh, wilder version on later at night flight. But the 7 o'clock version, they, they watered down a little bit. They were great. Some youngsters would... Uh, be watching and their parents would complain when? with my line of questioning. Um, I was surprised that um, Motley Crue, you know, like their new album, uh, uh, the most political album that any of the groups have out right now, and it really surprised me. And they, they said they were proud of it. And I found pleasantly surprising. So, uh, can I ask what your definition of heavy metal is? Or do you have one? Wow, gee. <laughs> I mean, because there's like, there's a big controversy. Like, some people think Motley Crue's heavy metal, and others say no way. It's, you know, but, um... Well, sad. they don't even say they're heavy metal all the time, no. you know. No. I mean, I, it, you know, they, they like funk music a lot, so... so they consider themselves like rock and roll then, or...? I think so. I yeah. think more so. I think they consider themselves more than that. But, I mean, their album is definitely political. I mean, they have um, very... Uh, positive statements in there. So how long have you been involved with music? Since like 76, you said? No, no, 77. 77? Yeah. Uh, so how old are you now? <laughs> no way, man. <laughs> cool. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I mean, you look, you look, you're looking really good today, you know? I mean, you look a lot, this is weird, you look very young. I saw you on that TV thing, like on 1990, just that commercial, and I was like really surprised. Uh, you know, blew me away. I feel good. I say I love what I do. So how do you keep in shape? <laughs> huh? How do you keep in shape? I scream my brain down. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you eat the drugs, alcohol, and that shit, or what? Well, you know, I believe, you know, it's your body. Do whatever you want to do with it. You know, however you feel best, do it. I mean, I, I believe in freedom. Yeah. And, uh, uh, myself, uh, I haven't found anything that gets me off as much as um, performing and doing my music. I mean, it's just 
you know, gets me off higher than anything I've ever done. I've experimented with a lot of things, but I just like this the best. Yeah, and sure. I just feel particularly good because I've been in the studio. And with this next album is like self-produced, you know, Rod Swenson, and, you know, producing and, you know, like we're just doing this ourselves. So, uh, do you have a current boyfriend or steady or anything like that? Wow, come on. I mean, because like, get songs like I Love Sex. I was just wondering if it sticks to, you know, whoever you happen to be with or it's from city to city, you know? Well, no, I, I, I think people, you know, I, I think definitely everybody should experiment. You know, I think experiment, try everything, do everything. And um, relationships are nice. It's nice knowing people, too. You know, but I think that people should do everything. Cool. So that means freedom in every aspect of that, eh? Sure, sure. I would never... Um, get married or anything like that, but I do, I do like knowing people. That's cool. How did you ever get hooked up with Motorhead and Lemmy and so on? How did you ever find your way to the Motorhead scene or whatever? Because it seems like you guys have been doing things for a while here, starting with the, uh, I think, Stand By Your Man record and all that. Yeah. I was just wondering how maybe you got hooked up with them, because they're my favorite band, too. Yeah, they just, you know, it's, um, they came to my shows, I've been to their shows, and, you know, like, it's just, um, just hooked up. Yeah. Lemmy called me up one day and just, you know, he started with this, you know, he just had this idea. He was in um, England. He wanted to do this Stand By Your Man for a hoot. And we got together in Canada and did it. It was a hoot. <laughs> and we just, we'll, we'll be friends. We'll, we'll be friends for a long time. So, uh, if you, like, do you have any musical or vocal influences? Well, I like, the, I like the real people. I like the originals. You know, it's hard to say. I mean, like, I like a little bit of so many different things. So pretty you know, much. I hate to put, you know, categorize things, you know, well, this, or I don't like, you know, this, and I don't like that. I don't like people who are narrow-minded. True. You know? I mean, I like a little bit of a lot of different things. I might not like all of something, but I might like, well, the singer sounds good on this, or the drone True. sounds good on this, or wow, the bass sound on that is amazing. But maybe I don't like the song. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You know, so I mean, but I can listen to a lot of stuff and pick. I love to pick it apart. I love to, you know, like see what you know. I, I try to listen to as much as um, as many different things as I can. You know, mostly metal, mostly metal. I do, you know, listen to a few other things slip on there. So you say that all of it, all music in general, from the very beginning to now, is all contributed to your. Yeah, yeah, but the, the hard stuff, the hard, you know, like I mean, I prefer, you know, fast and hard and raw. Cool. You know, this is this is what in, influences me. So the raw stuff. And uh, the real stuff, I mean, the stuff that doesn't sound like something that I've heard before. I like the original stuff. Not that, oh yeah, they sound good. They sound like somebody else. Fuck them. Did you ever consider yourself to be punk or hardcore? Well, sure. You know, like, I mean, they, but, you know, like, these are all labels, you know. It was 1978. And then that's it, just it's just a part of metal anyway. I mean, it's all you know um, the same stuff now, and it's, it's just you learn through doing. I mean, it's fun to just keep experimenting and to keep growing. True. And right now, this album that I did, I wanted to do since 1978, and I just didn't have you know I couldn't I couldn't get you know they didn't have the musicianship. I mean, it's so fast, but it's so it's exact. It's metal. It's, it's fast, but it's exact. I mean, it's right on. I mean, which and, and it's a three-piece, which I wanted a three-piece from the beginning. So, you know, everybody has to be really good because you're just standing right there. You're just right there. No bullshit. And no bullshit. And the album isn't, you know, like, well, it's a three-piece band, but where is there's 21 guitars on there. <laughs> you know, if it's a three-piece band, there's one guitar, one bass. And uh, That's cool. the, the drums are enormous with the our drummer. TC uses the double bass. Because on the, on the wow album, you had like all these musicians, you know, like everybody from Kiss, and you had yeah. that, you know, this and that on this song, that song, and it's kind of confusing actually, you know? But it was fun. It was fun. It was a fun thing to do. So how did you get, how did you come about getting Kiss involved with your album anyway? I toured. I toured with um, Kiss. Yeah, I saw that too. And, uh, yeah, right. And cool. we became friends. I became friends with Jane, and he just said, I want to produce your next album. And so, oh, there it is. Were you satisfied? Yeah, yeah. Um, I... Um, I think it's, I was real happy. I got me nominated for the best female rock vocalist of the year for the Grammys. Oh, really? Yeah. Unbelievable, huh? Oh, 
most people pay for that stuff. I didn't even know. I was in Illinois. I was doing a Rocky Horror show out there. Uh, and uh, somebody told me, I said, nah. <laughs> not me. Not me. And so you, you, never, you never warned that you were nominated, right? No. No, I didn't even know. So, you know I, then we finally called him up and found out, yep, it was true. And, uh, so, you know, like, it, it's, I don't like it. You know, like, it holds up for me. It's, it, it's, it was a fun thing to do. And it was a great way, um, you know, great working with all these different people. I love sucking other people's brains. <laughs> and, uh, but then touring, I mean, touring is where it's at. And that's when you get hot. And then, while, uh, while I was doing this Rocky Horror show, we kept sending tapes back and forth. As soon as I got off the road, I started to do the Rocky Horror. And um, listen, listening to tapes and working with these ghetto blasters until we got the album right. And then, um, when I came back from that, and then I went, we started working on the album, narrowing the songs down until we got the ones we thought we wanted. Then we went to um, England, did this Motorhead gig, and then we went in the studio and cut the album. We just finished sequencing it. We still have to, you know, bounce it over and master and stuff. And it'll be out in the fall. Cool. That's what makes it. That's what gets it wound up. What's your opinion on today's, like, hardcore scene? You know, today the, the people that still consider themselves punks and stuff, you know? It's like, cool, you know, it's all cool. Like thrashed, it's not metal, you know, just like thrashed hardcore. Yeah, it's cool. The only thing is, you know, some of, you know, some of it's real humorous, um, which is great. Um, some of it um, gets boring to me. Like I, mean, I, I don't like it when you know, like, kill, 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 you know, like, I mean, all this stuff. I mean, that gets boring to me. Hold on for a minute. Sure. I'm sorry, I didn't know it. Um, I think, um, some stuff, you know, like, I mean, speaks to a lot of anger in everybody, which is cool. I mean, like, but I was doing this, you know, five years ago, and it gets boring, you know? But I don't, and I don't mean to single out, like, um, Kill, Kill, Kill by Exciter, because it's a good song. And I think a, a lot of Exciter, I like the vocals. I mean, I like a lot. You just, you know, take some real chances, which I think is great. Take those chances. Do it, but I mean, you know, rip your guts out, uh, and stuff like that. You know, that gets boring. Well, like, are you into any bands? Like, say, you ever heard like MTC, like you know, uh, Seven Seconds, Dead Kennedys, anything that's not definitely not metal. Well, I was the first person to ever play the Dead Kennedys on the radio. I mean, I took the, um, uh, I got them played in New York and Boston, and uh, then they, you know, bad me a little bit and. Uh, that was in 1978. I got them played on the radio. They've never been played on the radio. Bad mouth, dude. Because I'm good friends with Jello. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. I don't know. You know, as Um, let's see. What's the most memorable, memorable gig on your last tour? The Wild, the wild Tour. Oh, the, the Hammers Nagodian. Come on, I've been waiting for years to play that place. I got banned there. You know, but... Yeah, what? I was banned at the Hammers Nagodian. Last, last year? No, 19... Um, what year was I banned at the Hammers Nagodian? 1980. You what? have the book, Your Heart in Your Mouth? 1980? Oh, you should have that. Now, there's the history of the first four years. Wow. Got all that stuff in. I told you, I'm a little fried here. <laughs> you want to get those facts right. I was banned in 1980 at the Hammersmith Odeon. I've never played England. I had a uh, um, Butcher Baby was in the top, um, let's see, 40, top 40. And they had to play it on the radio. They were forced into it, but I could never play there. How come? Because the way you look, your image, reputation, and all that? Oh, they don't have, you know, like, they're, they're afraid of anarchy over there, you know? And, uh, 
they just, you know, things are, they were scared of me, you know. And so going in with Motorhead was great, you know, but they didn't let me take my chainsaw, you know, I couldn't saw any guitars or anything, but I still, um, it was great because that music was just so over the top. Are you still into, like, your TV sets and all that oh, shit? Oh, I love to do that stuff, I'm cool. sure. I got a piece of a TV set, by the way. Yeah. From, uh, the Kiss Tour. You played All in right. Iowa at the Five Flag Center. <laughs> All right. Do you remember that gig, the Five Flag yes, Center? Yes, yes. Well, check it out. You, my friend was in the front row and he had a gas mask on. He was I remember. Do you? Of course I remember, sure. I was with him at the time and he had a gas sure. mask on. I remember. And he was all fucked up and he threw the TV at him and he cut the hell out of his arm and still oh, hit the stick. I remember. He, I talked to him afterwards and told me he cut himself. Yeah, they were trying right. to get him to sign some paper to see you. Right, he, he said, I remember he said, that. He said, fuck that, man. I'm not going to see you in no way. I remember that. Of course yeah. I remember that, sure. Yeah, I was right with that. Yeah, all right. That's cool, you remember? He'll, he'll die when I tell him that. No, I don't definitely see. I live for that stuff. The rest of the day-to-day, <laughs> I don't have a clue what's he tried, going on. He tried to catch that TV and sit around with him until the security finally took it away from him. Aww. He was, like using like a security blanket or something. It was great. Yeah, I know. I love to do this. I would, I would do this for my life. <laughs> I still have a piece TV, though. Yeah. It's still cool. Sure. Um, how do you go about writing some of your songs? Like, do you write the music too or do you like to sit down with your guitar players and stuff or we all work we work first we work with tapes we just all get tapes and then we play them um, back and forth each other and listening and picking them apart and everything and then we do nonsense words and the last thing we put in is words really? yeah do you write all the lyrics yourself usually? um they're very it's usually done in the we have one for our we have one room we rehearse it in another room that is like our office we listen to what we put on well, the, the, you've got a stereo and we've got the ghetto blast and we sit in there and listen to stuff and it's um, I haven't written a whole song myself ever you know like I do put in but I've never put a whole one together so yeah, I, about that. Well, I have a hard time I have a hard time I, I hope to I hope to but I, it's hard it's hard, and it's, it's, I don't know, it's better somehow, I think, when a lot of people put all the words together. Because sometimes you get in a rut, you know? Yeah, when you're, but if you've got, a, you've got three or four people sitting there, it, 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 it goes a lot better. Um, well. I heard one time that you, uh, okay, you had that one video out, I'm not sure what video it was, but you like, did some wrestling in it? Yeah, it's, a, it's my live video. Yeah, okay. Um, I heard that one time you challenged Cindy Lauper to a wrestling match or sure. something. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Tell me about that. I just did it for, you know, it's just a hoot. You know, I said, take her and boy George on with one, one arm tied behind my back. Did you ever hear any response? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Alright, You ever thought of joining the World Wrestling Federation? Oh, no, it's too popular now. I mean, gee, when I did that, it was so much fun. I mean, I love it. I mean, I love it, but now it's so popular. It's big. And when something gets popular, it's sort of, a, then it isn't as appealing to me. <laughs> I'm very perverse. True. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. <laughs> how many videos have you made? Have you made? We, right from the very beginning, in 1978, we were making uh, videos. We didn't have a, no band was open for us, uh-huh. or let us open for them. And so, like, we'd open our shows with uh, videos. <laughs> Cool. And, but there was no video TV, so the only people who ever got to see them were the people who came to the shows. Wow. And uh, then um, I did uh, what was it, the Damned video, and uh, that was the last um, Plasmatic video. And then the It's My Life was the first W.O.W. video. And then we'll be doing another one for this Commander of Chaos album, which is with a K. So you're Chaos with a K. Pretty excited about the new album. Oh God, yes! It's the most excessive, over the top, you know, guaranteed to, you know, flatten you out like a bulldozer record yet. Yes, I'm, I'm really, I can't stand it. I'm so excited about it. Who are some of your uh, favorite metal bands? Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same. I like a little, you know, like I don't even like everything that Motorhead has always done. You know, like, and I, you know, they're great friends. You know, I love them, <laughs> but. uh I don't like everything that they've done. It's, it's hard, you know? Well, like, what about, let's say, the word Sodom or Boybad? Sure, you know, like, and I like some of what they do. I like, I think Exciter is great, you know? So in other words, you can't say... I much. can't, no, I can't. I'm not going to stick anything on anyone. Because they I'm, might have a song that you might not like, so therefore... Right! Like, 
Right, but, uh, you That's know. That's how it is with everybody, but no one really thinks about that, you know? Yeah. I think, yeah. Um, Do you have a band, too? Yeah, I'm in a band called Hate. Did you send me a picture of your band, ever? No, oh. I haven't. You told me to send you some pictures. I'm going to. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to send you a tape of us, too. If you oh, want. good, good. You ought to do it, good. Cool. I just got a new, new drummer and guitar player in my band, so we're about ready to play some gigs here. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's it's great. It's man. It's all about money and shit, you know? Tell me about it. Tell me. You're pretty much probably happy in your position right now. <laughs> oh, shit. You're never, you're never cool. You're never cool. You know? It's, it's, it's the only people who are cool are Michael Jackson. They're so fucking out of it, you know. It doesn't matter for them anyway. Sure. You know, people who are cool, you know, who don't have anything left, you know, they sell everything. They sell themselves out. What do you think about, like, shit, like, like MTV and shit, like, I mean, I know you had a video on there and stuff. And Not it, much. It, it, <laughs> 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 Not much. This way, this Radio 1990, Nights like this, they're a little more progressive. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little, right. Nightflight's pretty hot, though. They're pretty cool. Yeah. But these other, it's, it's just like, you know, AM radio. They just yeah. water everything down. And, exactly. it's, it's, you know, it's the big box. They don't take any chances. They, they play the mainstream. They want money. That's all they do. You right. Know, they right. money with music. That's all it is, you know. With this. It's Did you, um, the last uh, live gig we did, we um, uh, put out a live EP fucking roll. Yeah, I got and, that on tape from Kilroy, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, that. Right. And it was, it's only available through the band club. Oh, really? Yeah, Jack Hammer Records. It's a riot. I mean, it's a fun way to do things like that. Is there any way I can get hold of your videos? Like, I'm, like I'm the videos on one tape or something? Uh, or, or, or. Someday we might get it together. You know, we're, we're not that together. We've never been very commercial-minded. Yeah, you know, and wondering. stuff is like, you know, it's still in boxes and piles. And at one point we will get things together. And we will, we want to put together some old videos, put together new videos, you know make packages and stuff, make available um, things that we've got, but, um, <laughs> you know, we're too into what we're doing. <laughs> right now, it's kind of hard, eh? Right. <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> we're not terribly business-minded. We're really just, you know, just out the establishment by flushing money down the toilet <laughs> and by making things available. <laughs> cool. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you feel that, um, I know this is kind of a deep question, but not really, I'm sure you've thought about it a lot, and you still do, but, like, in uh, the live EP that you were just talking about, yeah. ain't none of your business, a little speech beforehand? Yeah. Do you feel that a lot of men are sexist in the aspect that just because you may wear revealing or sexy clothes, that they can just take advantage or come on to you and invite themselves into you, whatever? Do you think that's... Kind of stupid because anybody has the right to look how they want, but when somebody goes overboard and looks how they want to look, then people try to like, take advantage. Do you think you can? Well, this is narrow minded people, and I hate narrow minded people. Yeah. You know, I just hate them. I mean, people, you know, their fucking attitudes. It's, it, but that's the, uh, you know, that's, uh, most people are, tend to be narrow minded, and I just hate them. Yeah, a lot of people are that way. Yeah, but, no. I'm not just for people being themselves, you know, whoever you are, just be yourself. Yeah everybody else alone. <laughs> do you have to deal with that kind of shit a lot, though? People, like, dudes always fucking with you constantly, even if you don't want them to. Dudes fucking with me? Nobody fucks with me. You're on. Right. You're your break. <laughs> no one does, huh? No. No. I, I, I've had, you know, I've paid my dues. What do you mean? I've been, you know, I've never gotten killed. You know, uh, it's where, you know, I'm getting uh, banned in uh, England, you know, like, right from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, Tell me what happened in Milwaukee. Uh, just, uh, you know, it's a... Well, I've only heard little bits and pieces, you know, I've never heard the whole story in one thing, you know. I kind of like to put it in a magazine. Yeah, there's a book, there's a book that's uh, got pictures, and, you know, like the story, and this book is uh, uh, Your Heart and Your Mouth. Uh, you know, it's just an, an unfortunate thing, I mean, it's just... Uh, Oh, God, it's, you know, it's hours, it's, it's just hours, it's, you know, um, uh, I was arrested, um, I was beaten up, I was, uh, went to, um, uh, uh, court, uh, jury found me not guilty, the charges were dropped against me, and, uh, I took them to court, and I'm trying to sue them, and then I 
just, you know, kind of given up with it because it's just so expensive. So the police pretty much, do they, uh, we call it, the police, like, harass you? Do they start with all of it or what? And then I heard that they harassed you and, like, saying, like, sexual things, and then they get you under arrest and heard they were, like, abusing you sexually and shit. They nearly killed me. I mean, I was in the hospital. I mean, I, you know, they beat me to I was unconscious after they handcuffed me. It's a very long story. It's very, you know, it's disgusting. Sucks. It's just what happens when your um, people are threatened by you. The establishment is threatened. They can feel that freedom, and they don't want to feel that freedom because they're afraid of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's bullshit crap. Yeah, but it's a bad thing to think about, you know? No, I just, I, you know, I like, uh, you know, it's 19, that was 1981. I mean, I... I um, what I sing, what I do is real. I'm a real person. Um, I don't. They can't handle that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is. It's a real experience. But I just got busted recently myself. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, what kind of reactions like did you guys get? Were you getting when, you, when the plasmatics first started out? Like, was there a lot of chaos and shit going on? Like when you kicked around here and there? Like, what kind of reactions were you getting? Sure. I know, like, the limousine, I mean, cataracts and the TVs and the chainsaws and stuff had to shake people up at first, you know? Oh, sure. You know, like, it always would. You, you know, you smash somebody's TV and you try to take that away and you got a revolution on your hands. <laughs> you know, that will never change. <laughs> that will never change. Especially when the basketball game's on. <laughs> sure. You know, I started out doing it just for fun and I realized how much it pissed people off and I, you know, got into it even more. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> keep doing it. Sure. Sure. I, I gotta get more. This is a, I'm not even supposed to call out for long on this one. This is our main hot. This is a hot phone here. Can you ask, answer a couple more questions? Sure, sure, sure. My girlfriend was telling me about, she read something, I don't know if it's true, but something like you get some kind of therapy with like pins in your face or something? Is that bullshit? Oh, I, I, acupuncture. I've got an acupuncture, sure. Oh, really? My, yeah, they, when I was kicked in, they kicked in all uh, my sinuses and broke my nose and all this crap. Oh, and um, I don't believe in regular doctors, and uh, so I got acupuncture, and it helped. It was great. I can breathe. I can sing. I can scream. No problems. Wow. <laughs> That's bogus, though, man. That should happen to you. Fuck. Oh, good. Um, have you ever been on any talk shows? TV talk shows? Huh? Have you ever been on any TV talk shows? All the time. Come on. Yeah? Sure. Oh, because I've never seen any of that shit yet. Oh, yeah. Like what? Anything big? Like Johnny Carson? <laughs> David Letterman? What, you know? Um, I don't... Well, Sally, Jesse Raphael, I just did that. I just did, um, with the night flight, I did... I got to write everything that I, that I did on for all these night flight and the um, radio 1990. They, I just throw away the script and do whatever I want to do. <laughs> and this is what I'm working on, is getting... I think there's a void. There isn't a video show that's progressive. And I'm trying to convince them that I'm their person. You know, just let me do what I want to do. Give me a spot. Sure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, there's also a void for good magazines. You know, like, this is what fanzines do. Because there's this, you know, void. Um, there aren't any good rock magazines. True. That's you why know? you support the underground, right? Right, right. You know, it's the only, the, 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 you know, and there should be, there's, you know, it's, there should be something on television, too. I mean, they should at least give us one show a month or something, you know, with yeah. some real people, not these, you know, other bozos. So do you read a lot of fanzines? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's all I read. I mean, the other stuff is just, you know, glossy. Bullshit. You know, that's how it is. Okay, um, one more thing. You said there was a plasmatics book that was like, or whatever, it was for sale during your tour with kids. I saw it. Yeah. How can I get a copy of that? I want one of those. Through the fan club. Through the fan club. Just write to them? Write to Yes. Yeah, not me, not me, please. I'm a mess. My, my, I'm, I'm two months, but I'm more than two months behind in my mail. Just but they're, and ask them yeah, the right. And they're, they're on the ball. These people, that's all they do. That's cool. <laughs> they're just fanatics. They love it. <laughs> um, you know, I'm okay. a little, I'm a little loose in my department. I lose telephone numbers. The machine eats them up. <laughs> Shit, okay. You know. Could you send me some photos, maybe, for my magazine? Oh, uh, sure, sure. Yeah. I'm going to put this out in like about, I'd say, three weeks. All right. And I, you know, I'd like to maybe get two, three pictures from me. That'd be great, you know? All right. All right. Same address? Yeah. Okay. Give it to me again here. I'll write it in my book with your number here. Cool. I've got, I've got that done. Okay. And your number is O. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Wait a minute, I've got this on another pin. Let's get these things all together here. Oh, one, one, five. Okay, right. now, now give me the proper address and I'll put it right here. Okay, 5523 Montello, M-O-N-T-E-L-L-O, Drive. M-I-N-P-I-L-L-O? M-O-N. Uh-huh. L-O-L-O, Montello. Yeah. Drive. That's Peoria. Yeah. P-E-O-R-I-A. Uh-huh. Illinois. Uh-huh. 61614. Okay. Um, also, uh, you going to be touring like Chicago and stuff? Yeah, um, I'll let you know. You know, like, first, day, first thing I'm doing is, um, I'm going back to England. I'm going to do this thing with the satellites. You know? <laughs> cool. <laughs> There's one TV show with it, because I think it's, it's great. It's cool. And, um, called Live from London, and uh, then I think, you know, like, it's, it's up, Motorhead is having trouble with their record company, I, I don't know if I'm going to be touring with them first over there, or be touring here first, but we will let you know. Um, would you ever consider coming to a town that you've never been to, like a small town, if you got paid? Sure. Because we'd love to have you, like, in Peoria here. Sure. You know, it wouldn't be like at the Civic Center or anything, because those places only accept totally commercial acts, but we have places here that we can't have shows at, we can definitely work something out. No, it's cool, especially when we're on the road, we're you know? three hours away from Chicago. Yeah, there, there would be the thing, like, we would play one place and then go there. What do you think about it? I'm serious. We'd oh. love to have you come here. We'd, we'd sure, we'd love to. Get it together, we'll do it. So, like, i got to know when you're coming to Chicago and I can plan it out. Okay, well, I know, I don't, I don't have a clue. All I know is the first thing I, I know is I'm going to England. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to, like, just write you, and I'm, when you get my letter, just hold on to it. I'm just going to tell you, to keep in mind that I want you to play here, so, like, whenever you, you know, Okay, and I'll let Chicago, you, yeah, let me know. I'll let you know when, when I find out what we're doing, okay? That's cool, and I'll send you some pictures of me and the tape of my band, too. Yes, do that, do cool. that. Definitely cool, definitely will. All right. Okay, well, I appreciate you doing the interview and stuff, and okay. I hope everything goes well for you, you know, future and stuff. Oh, same to you. Cool. Same to you. Good talking to you. Yeah. All right. Real cool that you keep it up with your fans. You know, yeah. a lot of people want to do that. Oh, well, that's where it's at. I mean, that's where, you know, that's where it's at. Yeah, well, listen, I hope, hope you maybe you come to Peoria sometime. That'd be great, yeah. 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 Oh, hey, I got another thing coming out. I'm telling you, this got the National Lampoon Mad as Hell issue. Oh, yeah? I've got a, a, a set of my photos that, that I took are going to be in there. Oh, really? They asked me to write something instead of writing. I submitted some photos, and I'm doing another one. They like those. The Mad as Hell? Yes. Yeah. Look, cool. for, look for that. When's that going to be out? Um, I think it's the next issue coming out. That's but cool. it's this whole issue just called the Mad as Hell issue. That's cool. And uh, then there'll be another one after that of just getting there together. But I'll let you know. I'll let you know in the mail when the next one will be out. Okay, well, please send me the photos. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. Okay. Good talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye.